Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Masters of the Universe One Fifth Scale Premium Edition Hordak Maquette statue from the folks over at Tweeterhead. Yes, these amazing premium statues that Tweeterhead is now producing for the Masters of the Universe toy line. Now, I previewed this statue back on the channel way back when they announced it, and now thanks to the folks over at Tweeterhead, I've got it in hand, and it's also shipping right now for everybody that pre-ordered this thing. So we're going to dive right in and get a close look at this gorgeous new statue. So this maquette comes in a huge fully enclosed box with photography of the statue wrapping all the way around it. And of course, it's nice and sturdy on the inside, packed in a nice styrofoam clamshell there, and there is some minor assembly required. Once you pull this thing out of the box there, you will have to assemble the statue onto the very heavy base. Now, this is a poly resin statue, so it's very heavy and also fragile, so you're definitely going to want to be careful careful with it, especially on some of the smaller pieces like the fingers or anything like that. You definitely want to don't want to drop it. You don't want to chip it or anything like that. So there is a metal rod that is in the bottom of the right foot of Hordak, and that will fasten into that very heavy, very sturdy base pretty well. His left foot is just kind of sitting up on a step there. Uh, it just kind of rests on top right there. So the only part of the statue that fastens to the base is the right foot there. Uh, and then there is, is some other minor assembly required. You are going to have to attach uh, the arms onto the statue as well as the head. And as you're pulling everything out of the package, you're going to notice that there are some interchangeable pieces, which I'm going to show you individually here in just a bit. Now, each of those pieces, the arms, the head, those all attach to the statue via embedded magnets. There are magnets on the insides of the arms and the hands, as well as the uh, neck of the head, so that these fasten in place. And I don't know if you can tell by the video where you're seeing me clip those pieces on there, uh, but the magnets are pretty good. Now, I will say the very first time I did it, I felt like the magnet wasn't quite latching on as tight or as strongly as I would have liked it to. Uh, but after putting it together, it feels sturdy. I'm not having any problems with the statue falling apart or anything like that. It definitely holds in the place just fine. And when you get everything put together outside of the package, this amazing statue sitting right here next to me is what you end up with. The overall statue is in the one fifth scale. He stands 21 inches tall, so he is huge. You can see him sitting here next to me. Uh, and like I said, very, very heavy. Uh, it's poly resin. So if you've ever had a poly resin statue, uh, you know just how heavy these are. And the base itself is also very, very hefty. When you look at the bottom of the base, uh, you will notice that it is going to be hand numbered. Uh, since mine is a sample from Tweeter Headed, it's an artist proof, so it's just got the AP, but the actual will be hand numbered there. Um, and the base feels good and heavy and sturdy, and it sits really well up on the shelf. And uh, we've got that one metal rod I told you about that attaches Hordak to it, but you can see he is very sturdy. I mean, he is attached to this base nice and strong, um, so he doesn't feel wobbly or anything like that. I mean, it's an overall very solid feeling statue, and the overall look is absolutely gorgeous. So let's talk about that real quick. Um, this is sort of like a modern take on Hordak. And uh, I know this is something that Tweeter had mentioned when they first launched this line, but if you guys remember, Sideshow was doing sort of a premium line of statues for Masters of the Universe, and they're almost like these... Uh, modern interpretations or kind of like very realistic, very grim looking almost uh, interpretations of a lot of the characters. And it seems like Tweeterhead is continuing that format there. So this will almost fit right in with that line if you're already collecting those. Um, so you can see Hordak here. I mean, he looks like Hordak, which is something that I always feel like is important when you do a redesign. Like you could still look at the character. There's a lot of signature hues there that make him stand out as Hordak. Uh, for instance, he does have the larger collar, very similar to the vintage action figure. He's got the red Horde emblem bat emblazoned upon his chest. Um, this is a gray version of Hordak. It actually looks like he's wearing kind of like gray armor or a gray bodysuit there, which is a really cool interpretation for the 
the character with some nice black and red highlights all throughout the costume. But all the details are super intricate. Um, I overall love the look of this guy and I love a lot of the little details like that collar there that I showed you and all the little skulls that you can see on the back of that collar and on the shoulder pads there. I think that is really cool. Uh, same with kind of like that Hordak like skull that is on his belt buckle. Uh, but I also love how like when you look at his feet, he kind of has the three toed uh, boots on, which again is kind of a nice homage to the vintage Hordak action figure. I think that is very cool. And then the base that he is standing upon is also a Horde themed base with that red bat emblem on one side and the red wings kind of wrapping around the base there. Um, I also like that the base is a mixture of sort of like a rocky look and, um, like an actual, like, I don't know, it's got like that combination of the technology and everything going on, which is definitely something that Hordak is all about, right? It's like the mixture of the technology and the sorcery. So very cool stuff. Now, the way I've got him standing here, and this is the way he is depicted on the package, is he does have kind of like that newer, more realistic Hordak head. We've got the right hand with the point, and the left hand is holding on to his Horde staff with the red bat there on, on it. It's very cool. I love how just evil and wretched this Hordak face sculpt is. Lots of great detailing in there. Got a nice wash. It's very, very cool. Very creepy looking. Uh, and I think that's important. The Horde is sort of supposed to be like this creepy almost monster movie type of group of characters at least that's the way they were intended for the vintage toy line so he definitely has that like creepy vampire look to him and i really appreciate that so let's talk about some of the different looks we can get for the character. One of the things I want to talk about first is that he has this included cloth cape, which is removable. So if you want to have your Hordak with the cape, that is something that you can do. It's like a faux leather material on the outside. Uh, you can see it's got a nice kind of shine to it, which is very cool. The inside has got like a nice shine or shiny red to it. It has these two elastic straps. So you can actually just wrap this cape around his back and there's a little kind of a cape notch right there on the front. So just stretch those elastic bands across and it wraps right on there and attaches. And now we've got this whole new look for the character. Plus it does have a wire embedded in the both sides of the cape so you can bend it and flex it around. And that way you can get like some windswept looks for the cape or you can kind of drape it around the statue there if you want to. There's lots of different ways you can display them with that cape. So it adds to the overall look of the statue. But now we've got to talk about all of those interchangeable pieces. Uh, for that, I am going to go ahead and remove the cape just for a moment because I want to show you some different things that you can do. I talked about that staff over there in the left hand. Uh, it is worth noting that the staff is attached to that left hand. So you can see we can just pop that left hand right out of socket because it is just a nice embedded magnet there. Uh, again, this is definitely something you want to be careful with. I mean, this is a very nice statue, but that resin stuff is going to be fragile. You definitely don't want to break or snap this, um, but you can pop that out right at the socket at the wrist. And then if you want to, you have just a standard kind of open Hordak hand there, which you can put in in its place. Uh, just got to find the right notch for the socket there, and that will slide right in place. You can see uh, what I'm talking about. See how it's a little wobbly there? Like the magnet holds fine. You can see it just kind of boop pops on there. I don't have to worry about it falling off or anything like that. So hopefully it holds on just fine over time. I feel like it will. It doesn't feel like it's going to fall out of socket or anything like that. Um, so you can do the exact same thing. And I'm going to do this now. We can do it with the head. Look at this. So you can remove that creepy Hordak head there. Ah, and if maybe that creepy looking uh, ultra realistic version of Hordak isn't your bag, baby. Well, hey, you've got this very cool retro Hordak head, which looks a lot like the filmation version of Hordak. It's got a white pearlescent color to it. It's got a blue mohawk and I love it. <laughs> I am really impressed with how well this kind of classic, almost cartoon style Hordak head works with this overall statue here. So you've got that option as well. I think it looks really, really cool. And on top of that, we can swap off the right hand up here with a Hordak 
arm cannon. And the arm cannon is very hefty. It's very big. Uh, it almost looks like it should have an LED light in there, but it doesn't. There's no light up uh, features on this. Has the red bat on there as well. So you can actually remove the entire right forearm there. And in its place, we can attach that arm cannon. And oh my goodness, look at that. We've got that kind of filmation looking Hordak head with the arm cannon, which is very, very cool looking. And of course, you can mix and match those parts however you desire. If you want to use the modern, more realistic Hordak head with the arm cannon, you can do that. Very easy to swap it. Still looks very cool. You can use this look with the cape. You can use the cannon with the staff. I mean, there's lots of mixing and matching options. I think the entire thing turned out incredible. So overall, Gorgeous statue. If you're a fan of statues, if you like the premium format maquettes like this, I think Tweeterhead did an incredible job on this. It's a very cool looking, very creepy looking Hordak. I love the options. Um, honestly, that's probably how I'm going to display mine. I think I really like that sort of retro Hordak head so much that I think this is the way I am going to display him in my personal collection. Now, with this being a poly resin, very big, very heavy, very nice statue, premium format statue, the price is going to run you that. I believe this runs around the $479 mark. So you're, you're talking just shy of $500. Of course, they're a limited run. There's not a lot of these out there, but they are available and in stock online now. You can buy it at places like Big Bad Toy Store. I'll even link to it in the video description for any of you guys that are interested in checking this out for yourself. Once again, I got to give a very special thanks to the folks over at Tweeterheads for allowing me to unbox this and really get in there and show you guys how this functions and how it displays here on camera. Definitely check them out. They've got that Tila statue coming up as well, which I've already placed a pre-order for myself because I think Tila looks gorgeous. Um, I know that the high-end statue thing isn't for everybody, but for those of you who do like it, or maybe you just want to get your favorite character, if Hordak's your favorite character... Look into it. I think it's a pretty sweet statue and might be something you want to add to your collection. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time. The Toys of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe is available for pre-order now. This official guidebook is published by Dark Horse Books and features over 750 pages of photos and information on your favorite He-Man and She-Ra action figures. And don't miss out on the exclusive bundle pack available for pre-order now from PowerCon. This bundle includes the official guide as well as an exclusive character guide supplement that you won't be able to buy anywhere else. Don't miss out. You have the power.